Apple's idea with Apple Silicon was to milk as much power out of an SOC as possible while expending as little energy as possible. And they have been doing that quite alright. My idea here is to get as many hours out of a single charge on your MacBook as possible without degrading your battery life as fast as Apple wants you to so you can come get that battery replacement from them and spend that money. Now there are two angles to achieving this. One is based off a couple Mac OS settings while the other is based off tuning how your MacBook charges. And to do that, we are going to use a special app I talked about in one of my previous videos. The app is called Wait For It. If you are very familiar with how iOS is with battery, you will know that like just like on iOS, macOS also has a couple settings that battery killers and you should probably pay more attention to. In settings, I would say you should turn off Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and AirDrop if you don't do either of the following. One, use an Apple ecosystem like use an Apple Watch or an iPad or an iPhone with your Mac and use them collectively as one ecosystem. Or two, use wireless peripherals like, you know, wireless mouse, wireless keyboard, magic mouse and the rest of them. Yeah, if you don't do either of these two things, then make sure you keep your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and AirDrop off most of the time on your MacBook. If you use a MacBook with a mini LED display, that's like every single Mac with a notch besides the MacBook Air M2 and MacBook Air M3. Make sure you use more of dark wallpaper as often because mini LED has a way of turning off lights and, you know, pixels on the areas that are not needed. I know the local dimming on mini LED is not as good as what you get on OLED, but then using a dark wallpaper on your desktop background, if you spend much time looking at your wallpaper, using a dark one will help a lot with battery. In Siri settings, I would also say you should turn off listing or Hey Siri or Siri, whichever you used to call it on, because it keeps your mic active 24-7 listening for that keyword. And let's be real, we don't really need Hey Siri on the Mac, not even close to how much you would need it on the iPhone. In lock screen settings, I would say you should keep the display on time to a minimum. You don't need to keep your MacBook screen on for two hours. What's the point? And also, if you use a screen saver like I do, I would advise it's much, much better to use that and set it to only activate while your MacBook is plugged in. Yeah, there is no point using a screen saver on battery. It drains your battery. In privacy and security settings, head over to location services and system services locate significant locations and turn it off. I talked about this setting once on the iPhone. What it does is that it keeps detailed logs of every single location your MacBook goes to or has been in and that drains your battery obviously. So there is no point. It's a Mac. You don't need to know where it has been. Yeah, so just keep it off. One key thing you should know is that there is this app called Activity Monitor. It will tell you all you need to know about what apps consume your battery. So head over to Activity Monitor and you'll see the Power tab. Keep it in descending order and check the 12-hour tab in that tab and you'll see every single app that's been power hungry and consuming most of your power in the last 12 hours. That's how you get to know if there's any app you don't need that's consuming your power. If you see it, click on it and click the X button to shut it down. Pro tip, never leave the Activity Monitor app running why you don't need it to be running because the activity monitor itself is a power hungry son of it. If you don't believe me, leave the activity monitor on for like an hour and then go check the energy impacts in the activity monitor itself and see how much power the activity monitor has taken in the last of hours and then you'll see what I'm talking about. As far as charging habits go, you'd hear often that you shouldn't charge your Mac below 20% and above 80% if you want to maximize your battery health. That's very true, but not everyone is as disciplined, you know, to be watching out for your Mac to reach 80% and then rush to unplug it as people say you should. So I have a solution for that if you fall into that category. I think you agree with me that if you use Apple Silicon, 85 or 80% is enough charge for your Mac to last a full day. No matter which Mac, yeah, both the M1 Air down to the M4 Max MacBook Pro and the M4 MacBook Pro will all last a full day of general use with its 5% maximum charge. But then, let's say you use a monitor or a disk 247 and you keep your Mac plugged in most of the time and then you don't want like your MacBook to charge 200% and just be stuck there as obviously keeping it in that 100% range 
for a prolonged time will actually degrade your battery's health quite faster than keeping it on 80 percent would i have a solution for you there is an app called ai density i talked about in one of my first videos this year best mark apps up there you can go check it out for more apps like it what ai density does is that it lets you set your macbook not to charge past a certain point exactly so with ai density you can tell your mac technically that do not charge past 60 percent and i have a theory way of showing you guys that it actually works you can see the mac is plugged in and i set it currently not to charge past 89 percent now it charges at 28 watts approximately and as soon as it gets to 89 percent you'll see the power output on the type c cable reduces to like 5 watts 4 watts 3 watts which is like the idle power consumption of the macbook so you can tell that at that point it stops charging completely and takes the rest of its power needed from the charging cable and charging brick itself so ai dense is a very good app if you actually want to keep your macbook's battery from ever reaching high extremes even if you plug it for like a week straight it will never go past what you set it not to go past which is very cool so i guess i've given you guys what you need